good afternoon. Welcome to our 4 p.m. live Bible study. Welcome, welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? So this is Brother Ron from Metanoia Christian Ministries, and it's another awesome spirit-filled day. So I hope that everyone here is doing well and doing all right. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Grabe, the weather is summer in the summer. Parang, it's no joke, it's no joke uh, out there. So praise the Lord. <coughs> praise the Lord. You know, I pray that everyone watching is well and that you guys are all in good health and that everything is um, is okay in your homes and in your families. I just speak life upon you right now and I pray that um, you continue to spend time in the Word of God that you've been taking these past couple of weeks to just really, you know, you know, spend time with Him and get to know the Lord even more, uh, more deeply. Because out of that relationship, it's just, everything just flows. Everything just flows. Thank you, Jesus. So, you know, um, today, we got an interesting message today. So, I, I don't know. I was just meditating. Okay, here's the thing. I, I don't mind doing like a series of teachings like that's fun that's fine you know what I mean I that makes it easier for me to be honest because I have you know like a sequence and I can prepare in advance I honestly would prefer that but again my my job is to give you God's message okay my job is to give you what the Lord said so i mean whoever is watching i believe it's not an accident i believe that it is um i don't know it, it's it's part of god's plan that you're hearing this message today so i pray that this um this message na para sa inyo talaga today talagang matanim sa puso natin saka magbunga sa mga buhay natin so hello good afternoon hello good afternoon good afternoon welcome back to our bible study every day Every day, habang naka-lockdown tayo. <laughs> na, see, you know, I don't like wasting time. Okay, I don't like wasting time. I like making use of my time. I'd rather, you know, I I would rather spend time in the Word of God. I'd rather, ayoko may nakaaksayan na oras na nakatulala. Or if it's something that is not that is not related to the Word, it better be about my family or, or about work or <laughs> something. I don't really... Uh, no, no, wala na kayo mga ibang hobbies na ano eh. But I, I'd rather make use of my time. And this is great. I love doing these Bible studies. Kasi yung, yung, yung Word of God na natatanggap, it's just, man, it's a, it's a blessing not just for the people watching, but even for me. And like I say, before I share anything, gusto kong maging totoo muna sa akin. You know, gusto kong maging totoo muna sa akin yung salita ng Diyos. Gusto kong maging buhay muna siya sa puso ko at sa buhay ko. And I want to apply it. You know, hindi lang yung porque may maturo lang or may masande. So, uh, you know, Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is alive and powerful. Meaning, the same scripture, the same, um, the same scripture, the same topic, the same parable or the same passage. Whenever you read it, kung nasaan ka man sa buhay mo, it could speak to you in so many different ways. Because the word of God is alive. You know, I, I've read... Through, through the Bible multiple times but when you read through certain passages depende sa stage ng buhay mo eh. depende kung ano yung hinahanap ng puso mo eh. depende kung like you may have a situation at hand or you may have a, a different um, you know context na pinagdadaanan sa buhay mo so I mean the word of God will speak to you it's alive it is powerful you know it has changed my life I wasn't like this before <laughs> it has changed the lives of of um of of many people in our ministry, it has changed the lives of I don't know a whole lot of other people that we have uh, reached out and ministered to, and pray for. So so praise the Lord. So you know um today I want to share this message with you out of um, Ephesians six. So I'm sure some of you who are already familiar with the Word of God, you guys know where I'm going. You know, yung title palang nito medyo obvious na kung saan ako pupunta dito. And I like teaching out of this. You know, I enjoy this. This is something that has been overlooked by so much of the body of Christ. This has been something that has been taken for granted or sometimes misapplied. Okay, so I'm not saying naman it's wrong, but it's just it's a misapplication of it. And um, 
I don't know. So I just want to share with you the armor of God today from Ephesians 6. And I am um, I'm excited just to share this with you. So I'll read through it once. Tapos himayin natin yung scripture. Okay? So let's pray first. I want to pray for you guys um, before we start. So let's pray. Uh, Lord God, Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity to have fellowship in your word. We thank you, Father, for your word, for your love, for your grace. I pray that everyone watching and listening right now will just receive these truths. Father, that if there are any other chains in their life, I pray that after this, they will be broken. All the strongholds will be shattered. All the captives will be set free because it is the truth that sets us free. So we thank you, Lord, for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Okay. Reading from chapter 10 uh, until verse 20. So I'll, I'll just read through it uh, and then we'll go verse by verse. Okay. So I'm reading from the NASB, New American Standard Bible, Ephesians 6, chapter, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. It says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of, of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness 15 and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace in addition to all taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God verse 18 with all prayer and petition pray at all times in the spirit and with this in view be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that, that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. So I love this passage, man. This is word of God. Like if you guys are into... Um, a lot of people who are into uh, deliverance and spiritual warfare, this is one of the favorite things to talk about because like you battle it out with the enemy, spiritual warfare, stuff like that. And, um, you know, it's the armor of God. So what is the armor of God? You know, there's just so much, there's so many teachings on this. There's so much, um, you know, some people believe that before you pray or before you start your day, you have to declare that you have to put on the armor of God, because uh, it's always a battle out there. So uh, I disagree with that. <laughs> That's it. Um, I'll explain to you why later. You know, I, personally, the armor of God, I believe, I believe it's not something that you put on and put off. You know what I mean? I don't believe that it's something that you have to declare or, or, or just like speak forth or claim or something like that. Um, and I'll get to that. And I'll explain to it because I believe, I believe that the armor of God is found in our spirit. Amen. So if you have the Holy Spirit, he will never leave you nor forsake you, you know. And um, if he does that, if, 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 if that's true, then his, the armor of God doesn't leave. The problem is, the problem is we don't put it on. You know, there's a difference. I mean, it's not that you don't have the armor of God. You have it in your spirit, but you have to put it on. You have to, um, you have to understand what it is that you have. You have to understand what it is that has been given to you in the spirit. So how can you apply something that you don't know or don't understand? Okay, hold on. Let me just load this. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's go back to Ephesians 6, verse 10. Let's start off with this. Okay, I love talking about this. Okay, so Ephesians 6, verse 10, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. See, 
this is a sobering reminder. You know what I mean? If you if you understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit, if you understand the power of the Holy Spirit, the new life, if you have a revelation of that, that you have been given the power of the living God inside you, in your spirit, you know, to carry out God's mission here, sometimes you forget that it's not your power. It's been delegated to you. It's been entrusted to you. It's been given to you. It's been gifted to you. You know, a lot of people, when they start seeing miracles and signs and wonders and they see people healed, they see demons cast out, they see lives changed, sometimes they forget and they think it's about them. It's about their ministry or it's about their denomination or it's about their church or it's about their community. or the, it's, it's not. It's about Jesus. It's always about Jesus. And there's... It's always about Jesus. So... It says, okay, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Because you can't battle this out on your own. There's just no way. There's just no way you can battle it out on your own. No amount of theology or, or doctrine or, 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 or whatever, or PhD in like divinity or whatever could, could, um, could cast out a demon. No, <laughs> it does not work. Like some of you may be thinking or watching like, oh, ba may demonyo? Well, they're in the Bible. Alam ka naman, nag-uwi na sila after nung last page ng Bible. <laughs> you know, they're around. They're destroying lives. They're destroying people. And a lot of uh, sicknesses are actually attributed to uh, demonic oppression. So sometimes people get stuck with sicknesses because it's a spiritual problem and not a physical problem. So you cannot use a physical solution to a spiritual problem. So anyway, to going back, be strong in the Lord in the strength of His might. This passage is 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 just you know it's straight up connected to Zechariah four six that not by power or not, not by power uh, not by might or my by by my power but by my spirit says the Lord. Okay, you can't. There, no human power can do this. No human power can do this. No bravery, no boldness can do this. It is only through the power of God and through His grace, through the Holy Spirit, that we can fight and we can overcome the challenges and the struggles of this world. You know, you know, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. In John 15, 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So first part is just a reminder, you know, from Paul to the Ephesian church to remember that you guys are seeing awesome stuff. You guys are seeing miracles or whatever, then praise God, you know, but remember, you got to be connected to the Lord. You have to abide in the Lord. You have to live in Him and just be one with Him because out of that union with God comes that authority, comes that power, comes that strength. You know, people always quote um, uh, Philippians 4.13 and they say, oh, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You know, they always quote that out of context. Like, oh, I, I want, there's something here and I want to do it so I can do all things through Christ who gives that. That's not what it means. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not. Actually, the whole premise, I'm not going to get into that now because that's a long conversation. But the whole premise of that is before you can even say that, you have to abide in Him. It's His power, His might, His spirit. He just entrusted that to us. So it is, um, we have been blessed with that. So anyway, move forward. Ephesians 6 verse 11. It says, put on the full armor of God. So that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Okay? So again, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. You had to put on the full armor, not just pieces of it. Okay? So we're going to get through the, 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 the full, what, what are the pieces of it. But the point is the armor, the armor works together. It protects the body, one body. Okay? The body is meant to, you know, function together as a whole. Therefore, every part protects something vital. You can't leave one hanging because whatever you leave hanging, it will be open for attack. You will hurt the body. The body will be damaged. If there are any gaps in your armor, in your armor, like if you guys watch like medieval movies, like old, um, like King Arthur stuff like that, and like Lancelot. You see them battling out with their armor and everything. And the guy always gets killed through that little gap in the armor right here 
or, or somewhere there in the neck. But that little space, that little opening where the blade can go in, that's where they get killed. And that's the problem. Because scripture tells us to put on the full armor of God. Christians don't even believe that there's an armor. Some of them want to wear pieces of it. Some of them think they have it, but they have no idea how to use it or put it together. Therefore, there are gaps. And those are the gaps where the enemy goes in and just ruins stuff for us. And that's how they, they get in and oppress. I mean, guys, the mere fact that the Bible says that we have been given a full armor means that we need it. That there is a battle. There is a, there is a struggle. There is conflict right now. And you can't see it. It's not this war. It's not this virus. It's spiritual. And the enemy is out to get us. I'm not saying, I'm not saying be afraid. But there's a reason why we were given an armor. We are in a war zone. And there's trouble. You know, so many of the world's problems, people are, um, are, are pinning it on all these things. Like, oh, because in this area, it's low income. In that area, it's like that. The education level. You know what? It's a spiritual problem. There are spiritual forces at work, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not. There are spiritual forces at work, and it's very, very real. And this is not supposed to be weird. Okay, just this age of technology, everybody's been focused on science and logic and stuff like that. They forgot and have neglected the whole spiritual aspect of our existence, okay? So we need a full armor. And here's the best part. God did not just give us any armor. He gave us His armor. It's the full armor of God. It belongs to Him. And he just gave it to us. So, so that we could be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. So armor is for protection. Okay? But this tells us to stand firm. It doesn't say wear an armor and go pick a fight. We have to exercise wisdom. It says stand firm against the schemes of of the enemy why so that we won't fall victim what are the schemes of the enemy it's honestly it's really simple there's only one thing that satan does there's only one thing that <clears throat> that the enemy um does and that is to deceive you and get you to doubt the word of god that's it you know it can come in many forms you know the john 10 10 tells us that that the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. And, you know, that's obvious. You know, everything that takes away. And Jesus came to give us life and life in abundance. So we got that. But the schemes of the devil to steal, kill, and destroy us, all of it stems from getting you to doubt God's word. Plain and simple. Why? Because Jesus said in John 6, verse 63, My words, they are spirit and they are life. So every time you depart from the word of God, every time... You choose your own method or 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 the or or the own your own um, discartemo. Every time you choose that worldly knowledge over the word of God, you depart from the words of life. You know the words of God are spirit; they are life; they are alive; they are powerful. You know. So ang 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 point dito is that your armor of God will help you stand against the enemy whenever he tries to attack you. And by attack, I mean he's going to try to deceive you into shifting your focus and moving moving your mind from the Word of God to something else. Kasi pag nalihis yung utak natin, pag nalihis yung utak natin mula sa salita ng Diyos at napunta sa makamundong bagay, yari tayo. Yari tayo. Bakit? Meron kasing tinatawag, this is, this is not part of my, my notes or anything, but meron kasing tinatawag na power of agreement. Okay? In Matthew 18 verse 19, it is a principle, a spiritual principle that says, where two of you agree here on earth, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. So, ibig sabihin, pag nagkasundo tayo, may power yun, yung words natin. Kasi faith na yun eh. Nag-a-agree tayo sa isang bagay. If I agree that the word of God is true and, 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 and you agree, yung faith natin, yung agreement na yun, creates an atmosphere of faith. Okay? At the same time, in Amos 3 verse 3, it says that how can two walk together except they be agreed? So, paano ka magkakasundo kung hindi kayo diba, nagkakaintindihan? How, paano kayo magsasama kung hindi kayo nagkakaintindihan? So, ito yung question. Do, do we agree with the word of God? Because the author of that is the Holy Spirit. So, how can we walk in the Spirit if we do not agree with the word of God? May malaking ano yung... Ano eh? 
Yung malaking power yung agreement. So you have to agree with the word of God. Hindi lang yung memorize mo dito, pero kailangan mong paniwalaan na totoo at makapangyarihan at buhay ang salita ng Diyos. You gotta believe it. So when you agree with with, uh, with the word of God, you know, there's power in that. That that moves stuff in the spiritual realm that we don't see, but it happens. So Satan, the devil, wants you to shift your focus away from the word of God and get you to doubt God's word. Again, this is not part of my, my notes or my lesson. I just, just want to talk about it. Yan yung ginawa niya kay Adam and Eve. Kay Eve, actually. That's what he did. He got Eve to doubt what God said. He got Eve to doubt God's word. Don't do this. He got he got Eve to doubt that. Kay Jesus, sa Matthew 4, yun din naman yung ginawa niya. Diba? If you are the son of God, nag-quote pa siya ng scripture, oh, doesn't it say ganito? He, isipin mo, yan ang style ni Satan ever since. That's why it is also true in, in, in the scriptures, in Hosea 4 verse 6, it says that we are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Why? Because if you don't focus on the word of God, you don't have a grasp of the word of God, you depart from the words of life. So that's why ang dami natin problema sa mundo nito. You know, ang daming nangyayari na pwede naman, may solusyon naman, ayaw lang ng tao kasi spiritual solution. So it sounds weird, di nila gets. But guys, it's real. My goodness, we have countless testimonies on this page in, in this ministry already. You know, so it's um, transformation, you know, people giving up drugs like like that, no rehab, no programs, no withdrawal, no whatever. And um, anyway, <coughs> moving forward. So what are, the scheme of the devil is very simple. It is all it is all that he just wants you to take your mind away from the word of God and doubt it. But um, you know, he will try to appeal to your flesh, he will try to deceive you, he will he will tempt you and do all this crazy stuff and and uh, try to um, try to harm you you know, afflict you with sickness and all that, but everything that he does, you can counter and you can conquer through the word of God. So in 1 John 2.16, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. So itong lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life, these are just, I'd say, Satan's um, marketing strategies. Pero pare-pareho lang yung, yung problema. Kahit saan dito sa problema nito, ang bagsak mo, do you believe in the Word of God? Do you receive the Word of God as truth? Is it, is it your standard for what is true and what should be followed? Kasi kung hindi, dyan ka madadari ng kalaban. Okay, moving forward. Ephesians 6 verse 12. It says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness, in the heavenly places. You know what, guys? There are a lot of bad people out there. I know that. I know there are a lot of bad people out there. I know there are a lot of evil people out there. And there's a lot of crime and a lot of hate and war and greediness and all that. But this scripture says, Hindi tao ang kalaban natin. Our struggle, our, our fight, our battle is not against the person. It's not against the flesh and blood. It is the spirit behind the person. Our battle is spiritual. It's not, you know what? Okay. Uh, I've had a lot of bad stuff happen to me. You know, I've had a lot of stuff uh, been done to us by really bad people. And then when I came across this, I realized that person, the reason why he or she does that evil stuff is because they don't have Jesus. Ma, actually, dapat malungkot ka pa para sa na mahawa ka. My goodness, this person is lost. This person is is a, a, a buffet for evil spirits to come in and destroy their life. Kaya napakasalbahe nila kasi wala silang Jesus sa puso nila. Well, well mas nakakatakot pa rin yung ano, mas nakakatakot pa rin yung, uh, yung Christian na may Jesus pero salbahe pa rin. Yun ang medyo, <laughs> you know, that's pretty bad. But at the end of the day, even in that case, hindi pa rin tao ang kalaban mo. There's always a spirit behind the person. All of you right now, there's a spirit behind you. But you just make sure that it's the Holy Spirit. Amen? Make sure it's not any other spirit but the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay? So there's a spirit behind each person. For us, it's the Holy Spirit. For them, we know who it is. Right? Rulers, powers, forces of darkness, spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. These are the enemies who are trying to move against us and destroy 
the, 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 the children of God. Okay? So, tika mo yung sabi ni Jesus in Luke 6 verses 27 and 28. It says, But I say to you, I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Why would Jesus say this? Because hindi tao ang kalaban mo. Your struggle, our struggle, is not against flesh and blood. Our struggle is against the spirit behind it. That's why we need love. We need to love each other. We need to pray for each other. We need to bless each other. When people do bad stuff to me, I pray for them. I may get annoyed and I may feel bothered for a little bit, but I renew my mind and I go back and I remember the word of God in Ephesians 6.12 that my struggle is not against this person. This is not a, 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 this is not a personal battle one-on-one. -on -one. It's the, the, this person does not know Jesus or this person has been oppressed by the enemy or this person has a spirit behind him or her that is causing him to do this stuff. And that's why they do bad things because they don't know Jesus. So we speak life upon them. Bless those who curse you. You know, do good to those who hate you. Love your enemies. This sounds impossible. But when you have the viewpoint that that person is just another victim of the enemy, shouldn't you be praying for that person? Diba? Pag yung perspective mo, yung taong yan, yung magdanakaw na yan, ganyan, ganyan. Bakit siya magdanakaw? Hindi niya alam yung katotohanan na salita ng Diyos. Hindi niya pa naranasan yung love ni God. Kaya siya ganyan. And even when the worst sinner repents, the Lord will welcome him with open arms. Grace is for everyone. Even the, the politician that you hate the most. <laughs> even, even, if, if, even the uh, cold-blooded murderer, serial killer, if they receive Jesus, no, no one is beyond God's grace. And they say, oh, no, no, I can't, I can't accept this. Well, you know what? You're not God. You don't get to, 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 to set the rules. This is God's grace. You know, he died for the sins of the world, not just a handful of people, not just people who are holy enough. So the next time we judge people, you know, according to their deeds and works, let's look at it from the eyes of God. This, that person may have done wrong. And I'm not saying don't file a case or don't penalize them or whatever. I'm not saying that, okay? Whatever the, the Bible also tells us to submit to authorities and we, we follow the governing law. So go, go right ahead, but keep in your heart and know that it's not the person that's the problem, it's the spirit behind the person. Amen? Okay, so let's move forward. Verse 13, Ephesians 6, verse 13. Once again, it talks about the full armor. Take up the full armor of God. He says it twice in this passage. You have to be reminding you, you need everything. You don't just go to war with bits and pieces. You don't go to a fight with just, you know, a one side armor, one no, that doesn't work that way. You have to put the full armor. Why? Because the enemy will throw everything he's got at you. If you're not prepared, you will fall. So I'm not cursing you. I'm just saying that is that is uh, just it, it's it's gonna happen, man. You can't be careless. We we face an ancient enemy. He knows people more than we do. He knows how human beings work. And if you don't put on this full armor. And I'm not just talking about bits and pieces. I'll explain every piece, why it works together, how it works together, and why we need it. Okay? So, but um, anyway, I just want to set that we need all of this. If you guys are taking notes, that's good. If, if not, um, uh, you can just rewind this or whatever, or send us a message. We'll give you some something. I don't know. Anyway, so, so take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. To resist means to actively push against or fight against okay to resist you cannot resist something that is not falling on top of you if there's no weight pressing down on me i cannot resist i would be the one pushing that means resist means i push back that means there is a force coming down on me i have to push back so with this armor with what god has given us his armor i can push back evil all of us should 1 John 3, 8, Jesus said that he came to destroy the works of the devil. How are you going to do that if you don't push back? See, this is, the, this is my problem. There's so much doctrine out there talking about glorifying all the, all the suffering and, 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 and all this pain and all that. So, guys, don't get me wrong. I've been there. But that is not your identity. That is a phase that you go through, then you find Jesus, then you become whole, then you become strong. But if your whole 
life is about just suffering, yung nagtitiis, kawawa naman. Magaling magtiis yun. Pero kawawa kayo sa kalaban. The, the enemy is, is gonna, wow, he's gonna take full advantage of that. Okay? Guys, we should not be passive. Passivity is, uh, okay, hindi naman dyan. So you guys, most of you guys are, 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 have graduated from school already. Okay, you're at that age. I don't think there are many students watching this. But my point is, in school, sadly, I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's, uh, it's acceptable. But you know who gets bullied, diba? There's a, there's a, there's a type, a personality type that gets bullied. It's the quiet, passive kid, medyo totoy, medyo ano, you know, mukhang hindi papalag, mukhang hindi, ano, very weak, doesn't wanna stop, talk, not, uh, very passive. Guys, guys, get this. Satan is a bully. He is the biggest, baddest bully out there and he's gonna try to kick your butt when he can. You know, if you let him. So if you're passive, magaling ka magtiis, but you will never be victorious. You gotta learn how to get up and stand firm. Hence the verse that says you have to resist the evil and then you have to do everything so you can stand firm. It doesn't say go out and pick a fight. It says stand firm. I think in the King James, maybe four or five times he's saying stand. He's saying so good. So, ang daming Christian, magaling magtiis. Okay, oh, galing, oh, wow, ang holy mo. Pero kawawa ka kay Satan. So, <laughs> ano yun? Pag-asa mo ng victory, pag heaven na. You know? Sa ngayon, punching bag ka. I'm not gonna stand for that. Because I was like that before. And I'm not letting the enemy take anything away from me anymore. I'm gonna do everything to wreck the kingdom of darkness and destroy the works of the devil. Kasi ilang taon na kong nasubo sa, sa kadilima na yan dahil nagpadala ako sa kalaban. Because I did not value the word of God. Because I did not spend time in the word of God. Sinira, nasira ako buhay ko dahil nakinig ako sa turo ng kalaban, turo ng mundo. So I'm not gonna do that anymore. I learned to put on this full armor of God. And now I resist. And now I stand firm. And now I'm gonna fight. Amen? Hindi tayong pwedeng passive. You gotta be, you gotta be strong. We gotta stand firm. We have to learn how to battle. Ang, ang sundalo hindi pwedeng malamya. Yun yung unang namamatay. Hindi ka na lang magsundalo kung ganun. Diba? So whether you like it or not, there is a battle. Hindi ba pwedeng, ay, bro, no ba to? Medyo nakakatakot yata itong uh, spiritual warfare. Kung hindi ka lalaban, magiging casualty ka. If you're not gonna fight, you're gonna lose. Plain and simple. Okay? There is a battle. Whether you pretend it's not there or choose not to believe it, it is there. It is real. And if you're not going to believe in it, you're not going to take up arms, you're not going to prepare, you will be a casualty. So I'm not cursing you again. I'm just stating an obvious fact. That's why we're told to fight. Fight the good fight. Diba? Anyway, moving forward. Okay, Ephesians 6 verse 14. It says, stand firm. Yeah, stand firm na naman. Stand firm. Why do you stand firm? There will be something coming against you. Stand firm. Having girded your loins with the truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Okay. Loins, girded your loins. <coughs> sa ibang translation, um, sa ibang translation, belt of truth. Okay. I'll explain. I, I'll explain. Check it out. What does the belt do? Imagine all this armor put together in different pieces. In it. What does the belt do? The belt holds everything together. Kung ano man yung suot mo, pag tinanggal ko yung belt mo, malalaglag yung pantalon mo. <laughs> okay? You know, if you remove the belt, the central piece of your whole armor, everything will fall apart. That's why you're putting on the full armor. You cannot miss, especially this piece. Kasi tanggalin mo yung belt, wala, nalaglag na lahat. Bakit belt of truth? Truth of what? Truth of who you are in Christ. Okay. Get this. Okay, example. Example. So, you know, um, like we, I have some friends who, who, who are adopted. They were adopted, and uh, meron sa kanila hindi sinabi ng magulang, diba? Hindi sinabi ng magulang that they were the parents didn't reveal until a much later age that they were adopted. Okay, so 
nung, when when this person found out, devastated siya. He was devastated. Because she's like, it feels that everything that you've, you know, I mean, thank God, okay, sige, pero feeling mo that you've lived, you know, a lie for so long and parang, it, 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 it messes with you. You know what I mean? It messes with you. It, 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 um, it throws you off. Bakit? Kasi yung truth pinakailaman sa'yo. Does that make sense? Think of something that all the all these years that you thought that ah, ito yun, ito yung ibig sabihin nun, ito yung ganyan, ito yung ganito. And then, all of a sudden, you find out that it's always been a lie. You know, think of a part of, of history. So, I, I'm not gonna say what or what. I don't have any specific examples. But the point is, imagine a part of history that you were taught year after year after year after year, mula elementary, high school to college, araling panlipunan, social studies, tuloy tuloy yung mga ano. And then you find out later on, na, my goodness, hindi pala totoo. Ang grabe, you know, kung ano ano pinagtuturo sa akin. Nahaka ano eh, you know what I mean? It, it throws you off. See, but that's the thing. What Satan will try to do is. He will get you to doubt your identity in Christ. The truth of who you are in Christ. The truth that Christ is in you. You're not just a part of Jesus. You're not just, he's not just part of you. He's not just with you. He's in you. Your spirit and the spirit of God are one, inseparable. That revelation, that power, that changes everything. Your identity that you have been made righteous that you are forgiven, that you there is no condemnation for you, that you are greatly loved, that you have great power inside you. Yung truth ng identity mo in Christ, ang gustong sirain ng kalaban. He will attack your identity. He will try to attack the Word of God and get you to doubt what the Word of God says who you are. See, that's a problem. Because it doesn't matter what people say. What matters is what God or who God says you are. Amen? So you have to gird yourself with... Uh, yung translation sa NASB, having girded your loins with truth. Okay. Bakit loins? Ang, ang, ang loins, the, the, what they refer to as loins is yung, yung male private area. Okay? Yo, so that's what, yun yung belt nila, protect yung area na yun. If you could imagine like a Roman centurion, an armor, meron siyang belt that protects that, that sensitive area ng male. Di ba? Bakit? Kasi pag pinakailaman yung truth mo, sobrang sakit nun. Walang muscle-muscle, walang malaki, walang training, walang ano. Pag napakailaman yung truth mo, it hurts and it will bring you down to your knees no matter how big, how buff, how strong you are, how well you've trained. If you get hit there, bagsak ka, yun yung point ni Paul. Truth will protect you. If you hold on to the truth, no matter kahit na cheap shot, kahit na... Kahit na uh, illegal illegal move or whatever or something or something uncalled for yung gawin you will not fall to your knees because your identity is deeply rooted in Christ and that is why it is so important to have this truth having put on if you go to John 8 verse 32 it says that you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free see if you if the enemy gets you to, to break or to throw away your belt of truth Sabog lahat. So, if, if you will know the truth and the truth will set you free, pero wala kang truth, that means you are in bondage. Kulong ka ulit, slave ka ulit ng kalaban. You need truth. Because it is only the truth that sets you free. Amen? So that's why the belt of truth is so important. What is the belt of truth? How do I put on the belt of truth? Know your identity. Know the word of God. Live it out. It has to be so real, not just here, but here in your heart. Kailangan totoo sa'yo. Kailangan buhay ni Holy Spirit sa'yo. Sino yung identity? Kasi push comes to shove, magka-problema man, magka-problema negosyo, magka-problema health, magka-problema relationships, you have to go back to that and say, hindi, this is the word of God. The word of God says, I am whole. The word of God says, I am healed. The word of God says that he will provide all my needs. The word of God says that there is power within me, that I can overcome anything through faith. Kailangan alam mo identity mo. Kuno condemn ka kasi nagkamali ka, no. The Word of God says, I am forgiven. The Word of God says, I am the righteousness of God. Then that changes. Pagbabalikan mo yung Word of God, that's how you wear your belt of truth. 
You know, it's not just something you put on, it's something you live. You don't remove it. You don't, you don't. Anyway, so moving forward. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, okay? Breastplate of righteousness. Same verse, Ephesians 6, 14. To stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with the truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. What does, right, what does the breastplate protect? Your heart, mo. It protects your heart. Why? Because your heart will condemn you. The heart is most deceitful of all things. I said Jeremiah, I think 17 verse 9. Okay? But your heart will condemn you. You, when you, you make mistakes. We're people. Diba? Tao lang tayo. We make mistakes. Walang perfect dito. In the spirit, yes. But in the, in, the, in the flesh right now, our soul and body, we're not perfect. We make mistakes. We screw up. And when you make a mistake, your heart would condemn you. But if you wear the breastplate of righteousness, ano ibig sabihin nun? It is knowing and understanding that you are righteous not because you're very good, not because you've done holy things, not because you volunteer in church or you've done all this stuff for the church. No, you are righteous simply because Jesus made you righteous. Okay? 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21, it says there that you, he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that you might become the righteousness of God. Guys, you're not only righteous, you are his righteousness. You are the righteousness of God. You need a revelation of that. Na kahit na anong mangyari, kahit pumalpak ka, you can go back to God and say, Lord, say, Lord I'm sorry, I messed up. But I stand back in your word. Thank you that I am righteous because of you and I didn't earn it and it's not based on me. But because you, because of your son, Jesus, I am righteous even though I messed up. I want to get back up, get back into your grace and move forward. Ano, asan na yung condemnation mo pag ganun attitude mo? E yung mga iba kasi may nagawang masama, may nasabing masama, uh, na honest mistake or nag a moment of weakness or something, I don't know, or na deceive. And then they feel, nagrabe, hindi na dapat ako bumalik sa church. Hindi na ako dapat ganyan. That's condemnation. That's all condemnation. And what does Romans 8.1 say? Roman, Ro Romans 8.1 says that therefore now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Any condemnation is from the enemy. Condemnation is not from God. Because Jesus was the one who was condemned for us. He was the one who took all of that on himself. So this breastplate of righteousness will protect you na kahit nagkamali ka, kahit na sumemplang ka, kahit na dapa ka, even if you screwed up, go back to this and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I repent. But I go back now to your righteousness. I go back to this truth that I am your righteousness. I may not feel like it. I may not look like it. People may hate me for what I did. There may be consequences to my actions, but your word says, I am righteous, therefore my heart will not be condemned. Kung ganun yung attitude mo, ang bilis bumalik sa word of God, ang bilis, ang bilis mag move forward, ang bilis ma, na, um, mag, mag conquer ng mga depression, bad feelings, self pity, like that. Sa enemy lahat galing yun. You can't be condemned if your heart is covered with righteousness. And if you have a revelation of right, righteousness. Guys, itong lahat ng armor nito, everything. They're not pieces. They are revelations of truth. And when you have that, you have it. You just gotta, kailangan totoo sa'yo. So yung belt of truth, you need a revelation of the truth of your identity. Yung breastplate of righteousness, you need a revelation of your righteousness found in Christ. That your new identity is you are God's righteousness. Diba? So, diba Matthew 6.33 <laughs> Alam mo bakit gustong sirain ni Satan to? Yung, yung breastplate of righteousness Matthew 6.33 Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness And all these things shall be added unto you If you seek first his kingdom So that's what you guys are doing You're reading, you're reading the Bible You're reading, diba? you're, you're listening to stuff like this So when you, when you listen to all that You get sharpened, seek first his kingdom Yung righteousness, seeking his righteousness e Ikaw yung righteousness niya 2 Corinthians 5.21 calls you His righteousness. So when you seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, meaning you seek first your identity as His righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. Kung makuha mo lang yung revelation na who are you in Christ, in your identity, you will be unstoppable. No, no struggle will overcome you. 
Problems will come. That's part of life. Diba? Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. My weapon formed, it just won't prosper. You will have to battle, but you will win. So you need a revelation of your righteousness. You need a revelation of your identity. Okay, moving forward. Ephesians 6, verse 15. It says, And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And uh, LT yata nito is parang shoes of the gospel of peace or something. So, you know, remember, idikit natin to sa Colossians 2.6. Okay? The gospel is not just something you preach. It's something you walk. You know, you don't preach the Spirit. You walk in the Spirit. You know, in Colossians 2 verse 6, it says, Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus, so walk in Him. Walk in Him. I taught this the other day. Sa isang Bible study, I don't remember which day. Say every day. But um, uh, the word walk, the Greek word is peripateo. And peripateo is also translated as be occupied. So let's let's try to read it that way. Colossians 2 6. Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus, so be occupied in him. Christ has to live through you. You have to walk his steps. He lives in you. Kailangan maging totoo. Hindi to effort. Hindi to uh, struggle for holiness. You don't have to do it. You just have to be. Be occupied. Let him live in you, through you. Hindi to napipilit, hindi to natatrabaho, hindi to napapagsikapan. You just need a revelation. Again, bagsa ko nito, identity. You have to let him occupy you so that there's none of you left and just all of him. So when people see you, they see Christ. They see Christ in you. And then you are that blessing to that person. So this is, this is about, you know, shodding your, peace, uh, your feet with the gospel of peace. You got to walk in God's word, not just talk about it. You have to walk in it, believe in it, live it, be it. Let it happen through you. Speak the word in, in power. You know, not just talk about it. It's not a cerebral exercise. It's not a, it's not a, a, a mental thing. This is by faith that you receive this. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, focus on, uh, it says, uh, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. People quote this all the time, but they're not walking in faith. They're walking in knowledge. Magkaiba yung faith sa knowledge. You know, people, just because you know a verse, just because you memorize the verse, just because you attended a series or training or class, or maybe you even graduated from some from degree uh, on this and that, that doesn't mean you have faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. And how can you have faith? How can you hear if the Holy Spirit does not speak it to you? So it's not mental. This is faith. This is a heart issue. Okay. So, you know, in Romans 6, 4, it says, Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. When you say walk the gospel of peace, you walk in the new life. Hindi pwedeng, or you preach the gospel. Preach ka ng gospel, oh God is good, God is good. Pero yung lifestyle mo, Old Testament. Yung lifestyle mo, religion. Yung lifestyle mo, puro condemnation. Yung lifestyle mo, puro pagmamakaawa at pagtitiis. Hindi victorious. How can you walk in the newness of life? Ito yung hindi ko maintindihan eh. You know, people, like so many believers quote, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17, I am a new creation. Eh, wala naman pinagbago yung bago tsaka dati, yung dati tsaka ngayon eh. Dinagdag mo lang si Jesus eh. And when you say the old is gone, that means it's dead and it's not coming back. If you say the new has come, that means Christ is really living in you and through you. Amen? So, Romans 6.4, we might walk in the newness of life. Yung dati, yung dating buhay, tapon yan. Yung dating law, old covenant, tapon yan. How can we, how can we move forward? Di ba? Anyway, so moving forward, moving forward. <laughs> I have to cover this. Psalm 119 verse 105 says that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So, plain and simple. Pag wala kang word, masasemplan ka. Walang kwenta yung gospel of peace kung hindi mo alam. If you don't walk it, if you don't let the gospel of peace, the word of God actually shine the light upon you where you step, if you do not dictate 
if you don't, sorry, if you do not let that dictate where you step and where you go, you will stumble. Bakit importante yung shoes of peace na to? Yung feet shod with the... Kasi gusto ni Satan, matapilok ka, matalisod ka. Gusto ni Satan, mag-stumble ka. Ngayon, pag nag-stumble ka, pwede ka na i-condemn. Yun yung gusto niya. But if you walk in the Word, and you walk in the Spirit, and you walk in the newness of life, how can He stop you? He cannot. He cannot. He can only stop you pag wala ka nakabalot sa paa mo. Uhulugan ka niya ng trap. So we need to invest in the Word of God. We need to spend time in the Word of God. Walang shortcut. Huwag mong iasa sa mga summary-summary. Huwag mong iasa sa mga theological books. Kung ano-ano. Read your Bible for yourself. Grabe. Grabe. Impossible. Guys, plain and simple. Kung hindi ka rooted sa word, same lang ka. Ganun lang simple. So I'm not condemning. Again, I'm stating a fact. Okay, moving forward. Because we're almost out of time. Ang dami kong pwedeng pag-usapan dito. Um... Ephesians 6.16 In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. The shield of faith. May nakita akong comment kanina from Pastora Monique. Yung problema, wala nang nagsusuot ng shield of faith. Ang sinusuot, ang sinusuot shield of knowledge. Yung walang kwenta yun. Kasi nasisira ka agad yun. Di ba? Knowledge is destroyed by arguments. Faith is a different story. Faith is a different story. Okay? In 1 John 5, verse 4, it says, Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So, tayo yun, di ba? Whatever is born of God, that's us. We are born again. We are spiritually born again believers. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. You need the shield of faith. Because that's how you overcome the world. Why? Because the enemy will throw all his darts at you. Ano yung arrows na yan? Eh, Okay, you know, people say, oh, it's fear, it's sickness, it's like this. Plain and simple. Anything that Satan throws at you, simplified, is just trying to get you to doubt or disagree with the Word of God. Kaya ang pinakamalaking problema ng Kristiyano, when you let your experience determine kung ano ibig sabihin ng Bible, the Word of God will not bow down to you. You bow down to the Word of God. The Word of God should not adjust to how you feel or what you think or what you experience. The Word of God should determine what you experience. For you to, to say na, ah, kasi ito hindi nangyari sa akin, so therefore, itong Word of God, hindi dapat ganyan. You create yourself to be your own God. Kasi ikaw na nagsasabi kung anong dapat ibig sabihin nun. Hindi na si Holy Spirit. Diba? John 14, 26, He will teach you all things. I think in John 16, He says He will reveal the truth. He will bring to remembrance John 14, He will bring to remembrance the words of the Lord Jesus. So, mas magaling pa tayo kay Holy Spirit ngayon kasi tayo na nagsasabi kung ano dapat yung Word of God. Ganun ba yan? That's the problem. That is the problem. You know, so, you know, we need faith. We need to put up faith, not just knowledge. Knowledge well, it's the first step, but you need to go deeper. The Holy Spirit has to speak the Word of God to you. He is our teacher. He will be the one to, He's our counselor. He will be the one to reveal truth to you. And when He speaks to you, then you have faith. Then you can overcome the world. Walang kwenta, memorize mo lahat ng verse kung wala doon totoo sa inyo. Kailangan totoo sa iyo. Kailangan mong maniwala na by His stripes, we are healed. We were healed. Kailangan totoo sa iyo That's not just, oh hindi, kasi dati kasi sinubukan ko, hindi gana, hindi gana to, hindi ganyan. That's not what the Word of God says. Romans 3, 4, Let God be true and every man a liar. So as far as the Word of God is concerned, anyone who says that is a liar. The Word of God should not adjust to you. We adjust to the Word of God. Okay? So, ang point ko lang dito, bakit? Bakit sobrang importante nito? How can you have faith in something na hindi totoo sa'yo? Something you don't trust. You can't. You can't have faith in something that you don't trust. So, tam ayan, sige, knowledge. But that's just the first step. Continue to dig deeper. You know, yung, yung arrows, yung fiery arrows that Satan throws? My goodness, I'm running out of time. But anyway, sorry. I'll move forward. Uh, arrows, um... It's all to get you to doubt God's word. When you doubt God's word, when you reject God's word, Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So when you lack knowledge, when you lack understanding, how can you have faith if you don't even have knowledge? 
Walang pwedeng i-quicken, walang pwedeng i-speak sa iyo si Holy Spirit na hindi mo inalam sa Scripture. He will not speak to you that anything that goes against Scripture. Baka may sabihin yun pero hindi na si Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? How can you rightly divide the word of truth if you don't know it? You can't have faith in something you don't know. So anyway, okay, moving forward, Ephesians 6 verse 17. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Guys, salvation protects. Okay, this one, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Pero what does the helmet protect? It is your mind. Salvation protects your mind. Why? Plain and simple. Hindi ko napapahabain to. Tigo mo si Apostle Paul. Okay? He said in Philippians 1.21, he said that to live is Christ and to die is gain. Okay? Ano yun sa utak niya? His salvation protected his mind. These guys wanted to kill him. These guys stoned him to death. These guys, uh, how many, ilang beses na lashes? 39, uh, 40 lashes minus 1. Ilang beses? Uh, uh, ilang beses? Basta ano yun eh? They were, we talked about that the other day. All the sufferings and persecutions of Paul. He was shipwrecked. He was and he faced robbers. People were beat beat him, and he went through hell. He was jailed so many times. He probably couldn't even count it anymore. But he said, "To live is Christ; to die is gain." Why? Because kung patayin niyo ako, de okay lang. I'm saved. What's the worst thing that can happen to you in this life? You die, and then what? You go to heaven, and there's no more pain, no more suffering. Guys, that's it. It's not bad. Mahirap lang yun para sa mga taong maiwan natin, but man, that's gonna be, that's a promotion. Diba? You should, if you're a Christian, you should not fear death. Salvation should protect your mind. Salvation will protect your thoughts, your mind, that you can rest assured that no matter what happens, worst case, I die, I go to heaven. If I live, I have Jesus. I'll be okay. I am saved. I am redeemed. I am righteous. I have a new identity. I am righteous not because of me. I am righteous because of Jesus. And I have this new identity. So you want to kill me? Go ahead. I go to heaven. You don't want to kill me? I'm going to stay here and preach the gospel. O sige, papano mo tatakutin yung taong ganun? Anong problema yung nakakatakot sa taong ganun? Wala. Your mind is focused on the word. Your mind is focused on your identity. Your mind is focused on salvation, that, that, that Lord, I am saved, that no matter what happens, thank you, I go to be with you. So how do you bother a person like that? You can't, right? Oh, moving forward, we are given, this is the last piece of the armor, so we're almost out of time. Okay? It says the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So I'm not going to go too much into this, but you can see, I have a separate teaching of, of, on this. If you want to go look at the Metanoia Christian Ministries YouTube or this page, Look for, uh, I think the title of the, the message is Word versus World or something like that. Okay, but I talk about this, how you use the Word of God as a weapon. Okay, so Ephesians 6, 17, the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. Because, you know, Hebrews 4, 12, which I quote very often, the Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. In Matthew 4, you see Jesus quoting scripture to fight the enemy. Satan was in front of him, tempting him. And then he quoted scripture to Satan and said, It is written three times. And then Satan left. Kasi wala na siyang magawa. Guys, mag extend tayo ng konti dito. Bear with me. But here's the thing. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. Ephesians 6.17 Yung word na word, the word word is rema. Is the spoken word of God. The word Word, the Word of God, the Rema of God is the sword of the Spirit. It's not the Logos. It's not about this. My goodness, it's not about this. Who cares if you can use a $5,000 word? Who cares if you, if you can, oh, you need to check the dictionary because he sounds so intelligent. Satan doesn't care. He's going to kick your butt if you don't have Rema. Because without Rema, without the spoken Word of God, you don't have faith. Without Rema, the spoken Word of God, you don't have the sword of the Spirit. Without Rema, you cannot fight the enemy. He's gonna kick your butt. And I'm sorry to say that, but that's true. So, hindi pwedeng enough na knowledge lang. Kaya, ilagi kong sinasabi when people ask me, ano to, faith issue or kanyang kanyang? Ang problema kasi is that people think you knowledge nila, faith na. So make sure that you go back to the word and make sure you really believe the word. Push comes to shove. Will you believe the word of God? 
When, when death stares you at the face, can you believe that the spirit in you who raised Christ from the dead can also raise that person from the dead? Oh, possible ba yan? Kasi yan nga yung problema eh. Oh, possible ba yan? Oh, hindi ka nagbabasa ng Bible. Kasi yun yung nakasulat dito eh. Can you believe God's word? People believe in God, but they don't believe that He can do what He says. Yan ang problema ng tao. Moving forward, I'll just, I'll just wrap up. We're almost done here, okay? So Ephesians 6, 18, it says, With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit, and with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. So if you pray in tongues, God bless you. Praise God. You know, pray more often, pray longer than you can, pray as often as you can. You know, if you don't have um, that gift yet, I suggest you go look at, um, go through the videos of this of this page or in our in our YouTube page, look for understanding the gift of tongues. It'll explain. It's another message that I, I I taught recently that will really explain what gift of tongues is. It's not weird. It's not abnormal. It's not of the devil. It's not satanic. It is a gift from the Holy Spirit. So desire it because it will build you up. Jude one twenty says, "You beloved, building yourselves up on the most holy faith, praying." in the Holy Spirit. So when you pray in the Spirit, you pray in tongues, you edify yourself, you build yourself up in the most holy faith. Um, second part of that verse in Ephesians 6, 18 says, be on the alert with all perseverance. Be on the alert because the enemy, he's there, he's around. I'm not saying he's not everywhere. But if you're doing God's work, he's going to try to prevent you. Okay, so be on the alert. You know, you don't want to be blindsided. You want to be, I am a sniper. Okay? With all perseverance, meaning it's not easy. May laban talaga mga kapatid, pero may sandata tayo, may armor tayo. Okay? First Peter five eight says, uh, "Just be, just be on alert. Be of uh, sorry, uh, be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So don't be afraid of the enemy. I'm just saying, be alert. Doesn't say be afraid." Maging alisto ka lang, huwag tatanga-tanga. <laughs> diba? Tatawid ka ng kalsada. Siyempre, tingin ka. So, you be alert. The enemy, he's, he's looking for someone to devour. And the only way he will devour you is if you allow him. Okay? Because God has given you everything pertaining to life and godliness. 2 Peter 1. All his promises are yes and amen. Through Jesus Christ, 2 second, second Corinthians 1 verse 20, everything, He has given you a power, a, a spirit of power. Diba? 2 Timothy 1 7, He has given you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So, ano pa bang kulang natin? Guys, yung kalaban, don't, don't take Him for granted. You know, don't ignore Him. He wants you to ignore Him. Anyone who says, wala nang demonyo, eh, daling sa demonyo. Anyone who says, wala, wala nang guna, pansinin yan, demonyo rin yung may sabi nun. Okay? Don't take him lightly. Don't be demon-focused. Be Christ-focused. Focus on the cross, not on the enemy. Okay? But be alert. At least ito, you know how to fight. The armor of God is not just something you declare or you say or you pray about. It's something you are. It's part of you. It's part of your identity. You need a revelation. For each of these pieces, these are revelations that you need. You need the spoken word of God in your heart to come alive. Your identity the truth of who you are, the truth of your righteousness, the truth of your salvation, the assurance of your salvation. You need to know the gospel of peace. You got to walk in the word of God, not just talk about it. Diba? Ito yun eh. You know, you shield the faith more. You need that. You need the revelation that this is the faith that overcomes the world. That I will spend my time in the word of God because this is what, is what overcomes the world. Nothing can overcome me because of my faith. And lastly, you use the weapon. When the enemy comes against you, you speak the word of God with power and in truth and in agreement. May pangit na nangyayari, may sakit. I, I command this infirmity to get out in the name of Jesus because I belong to Christ. Somebody condemns you, you messed up. I may have made a mistake, but I'm going to rise above this because I'm the righteousness of God. And as I spend time in the word, I will be sharpened. And I will, I will conform not to the world, but I will be renewed and transformed by the word of God. And if you have that attitude, nothing will stop you. Amen? So, guys, you know, I got to end there. So we're, we're over time. And um, I pray, I, oh my goodness, if you just let me stay here, I'll be here for hours, you know. 
But don't be afraid to use the sword of the Spirit. Pero tandaan mo yung sinabi ko. Yung sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, the Word is Chrema, not Logos. It's the spoken Word of God. Kailangan totoo sa'yo yung Word of God. Hindi pwedeng second, third hand faith. Hindi yung nabasa mo sa meme. Hindi yung verse a day. Hindi yung five minute devotional. It has to be your personal revelation from God to you. That's when you have faith. Amen? So let's pray. Okay, let's pray. Lord God, Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for everyone watching. I speak life upon everyone here. I pray that this revelation, Lord, this truth about your armor, what it is, how we get it, how we wear it, Father, I pray that it will bear fruit in the lives of my brothers and sisters. I pray that every single one of them will receive these revelations of truth from your word, from the Holy Spirit, not from me, Lord, from your Holy Spirit, straight to their hearts, that they can own this truth, that they will take comfort and, and be able to stand in the truth of your word, the truth of your identity, the truth of, of the righteousness that you have given us, that we have become your righteousness, O Lord, the truth. Father, that, 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 that we must walk in your word, not just talk about it. That we walk the gospel, we live the gospel, we are occupied by the gospel. Not just talking about it, not cerebral, not, not just uh, talking about empty, empty arguments and theologies. This is alive, the word is alive and powerful. Father, I pray that every one of them will receive the revelation that it is our faith that really does overcome the world. That nothing can overtake us because we have the faith. That nothing can penetrate our minds because of the assurance of salvation that we have, that we belong to you. The worst case that can happen is if we, if we die, we go to be with you. And that's awesome. So today, Lord, we commit that we will not fear. We commit, Lord, that whatever adversary comes against us, we will fight. We are no longer passive. We repent for being passive. We repent for being weak. Para sa mga nagtitiis lang at pagalingan ng suffering, we repent of that. That is not godly. We will stand up, take up arms, put on this full armor, and fight. And we will speak the word of God against any adversary, any oppression, anything that stands in our way from pursuing this walk with you. We speak the word of God. So Father, we thank you for your love, for your grace. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. And I ask you, Lord, to continue to just strengthen my brothers and sisters out there. I speak life and health, and healing, and prosperity, and blessings upon everyone watching here right now. In Jesus' name, amen. So guys, that's about all the time I have for today. I know you have questions. If you do, we kind of extend it a little bit. But please, just send questions to the page. We will get back to you as soon as you can, as soon as we can. So again, we'll see you. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 4 o'clock. I love you guys with the love of Jesus. You Be blessed.